Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. In this we will see the formula based on Laplace transform of standard function. Since many functions are there in the Laplace transform, so here we will see the Laplace transform of every function from one by one. First we will see Laplace transform of constant, right? And the Laplace transform of constant is constant upon s. In similar way, if you are going to find the Laplace transform of constant power of a into t, then formula will be 1 upon s minus of a into log of k. Always remember that, here the multiplier of t we have plus of a right so here we will take the reverse of plus a and the reverse of plus a will be the minus of a so that's why here we have minus i hope you understood this thing right in similar way if you're going to find the laplace transform of capital k raised to minus of a into t so in that particular case what we have to do since the multiple of t here we have minus of a and the reverse of minus of a will be the plus of a so here the formula will be one upon s plus of a into log of k so this is the third formula of laplace transform in similar way the fourth formula is, if we are going to find the Laplace transform of e raised to a into t, right? So formula number 4 and formula number 2 are almost similar, but only difference is that here instead of k, here we have a e, right? So here we are going to write the same formula over here, but at the place of k, we are going to write a e over here. Now let's see what happening over here, right? 1 upon s minus of a into log of e will going to come, but the log of e is always equal to 1. So at the place of log of e, here we will put 1 and then after that we will get 1 upon s minus of a. Or in general, you can say Laplace transform of e raised to a into t is equal to 1 upon s minus of a. And the fifth one is the formula number of fifth and formula number four are almost same, but only difference is that here at the place of a, here we have minus. So what we'll do over here on the right hand side, here the minus will be replaced by plus and everything will be the same, like the like formula number four only. I hope you understood everything over here. So here we have seen total five formula of the Laplace transform. Now see the formula number six. And then from the 6 and onward, here we will see the Laplace transform of trigonometric function, right? First one is Laplace transform of sin at will be a upon s square plus of a square. And if I am going to find the Laplace transform of sin hyperbolic of at, here we have, right? Always remember that whenever you will get the hyperbolic function, in that particular case, in the denominator, the sign should be minus. And if the function is normal, right? Here we have sin of at, right? This is a normal function, this is a hyperbolic function. In the normal function, plus sign should be there in the denominator between the two different terms, right? But here we'll get the minus. I hope this thing is understood to you. And if you're going to find the Laplace transform of cos of at, then the formula will be s upon s square plus of a square. In similar way, if you're going to find the Laplace transform of cos hyperbolic of at, right? Here hyperbolic is coming. So in that particular case, in denominator, we'll get the minus between the s square and a square. I hope you understood this thing, right? And uh, in case of numerator, right? And one more trick is there. Whenever you will get a sign, so in that particular case, the numerator will be a. Here we have sign, so numerator is a, and here we have sign, so numerator is a, right? If And if you will get the cos in the input, then in that particular case, the numerator will be s. This is a cos, so here we have s, and here also we have a cos, so here we have s. I hope this thing is, this thing is understood, understood to you, right? So total we have completed the five different formula of the Laplace transform. Now after that, one more formula is pending. This is a formula number 10. That is Laplace transform of t raised to n, right? If we're going to find the Laplace transform of t raised to n, then two different cases will going to exist over here, right? That depends on the value of n. If the value of n is integer value, like if the n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and onward, right? In that particular case, here we're going to put the Laplace transform of t raised to n equal to factorial of n upon s power of n plus 1. I hope this thing is understood to you, right? In similar way, uh, Laplace transform of t raised to n, if you will get the value of n equal to 1 by 2, 3 by 2 and 5 by 2 and so on, right? Here fraction values we have. If the value of n is present in a fraction form, then in that particular case, here the second case will be applicable and the Laplace transform of t raised to n will be equal to gamma of, this is a sign of gamma, right? Gamma of n plus 1 upon s power of n plus 1. I hope this thing is understood to you, right? In the Laplace transform, transform of t raised to n, the two different cases will going to exist. This is case number 1 and this is case number 2 that depend on the value of n. So now, if we are going to see in the formula here, here we have the factorial and here we have the gamma. So now I will see the concept of factorial as well as the concept of gamma, right? If you want to find the factorial of n, so what you have to do? Here we have to do the multiplication of n and then after that we will decrease the number n in the decreasing order until we'll, till we get 1, right? So here we'll write n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into up to 1, right? So here we'll arrange the n in the reverse order. And after that, here every values will go to multiply it, right? And whatever result will come, that will be considered as, or that will be called as factorial of n. For example, here we can say, 
if you want to find the factorial of 6 right so here we'll arrange the number 6 in the decreasing order from 6 to 1 so 6 5 4 3 2 1 and the multiply sign will become will come in between and after that if you're going to multiply 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into then you will get 720 right in similar way if you're going to find factorial of 5 so factorial of 5 so what do you have to do over here here we have to arrange the number 5 in the decreasing order till we get 1 and after that every number will be going to multiply it with each other right so 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 will going to come and we'll get 120 similar case with the factorial of 4 and factorial of 3 also right so this is all about the concept of factorial and how it is to be calculated i hope you understood this thing now after that we will see calculation of gamma right because in the second case here we are using the gamma function so now see how the gamma function to be evaluated that if you want to calculate the value of gamma of n the formula is n minus of 1 into gamma of n minus 1 always remember that outside the gamma we have n, n minus 1 and inside the gamma also we have n minus 1 right and one more thing you should know gamma of 1 by 2 value is fixed and this is nothing but square root of pi that you should know right gamma of 1 by 2 is equal to square root of pi and from gamma of 1 by 2 we can de derive the other values also like if you want to calculate gamma of 3 by 2 right so here we'll go to apply the formula so at the place of n here we have 3 by 2 so here, here we'll write 3 by 2 minus 1 and inside the gamma also we'll add 3 by 2 minus 1 and 3 by 2 minus 1 will be nothing but 1 by 2 and 3 by 2 minus 1 is again nothing but 1 by 2 right so 1 by 2 will be as it is and gamma of 1 by 2 is nothing but square root of pi so we're going to put this value then after that we'll get square root of pi divided by 2 i hope this thing you understood to you right in similar way you can calculate gamma of 5 by 2 also right again we're going to apply this formula so as soon as if i'm going to apply this formula so here we'll get outside the gamma we'll get 5 by 2 minus 1 and inside the gamma again we'll get 5 by 2 minus 1 and 5 by 2 minus 1 is nothing but 3 by 2 and inside the gamma we'll get 3 by 2 and gamma of 3 by 2 has been evaluated over here right so so we're going to put this answer over here and then we'll get gamma of pi by 4 i hope this thing is again understood to you right now after that after that we can also calculate gamma of 7 by 2 right and gamma of 7 by 2 by using this formula here we can write gamma of 7 by 2 minus of 1 into gamma of 7 by 2 minus of 1 and 7 by 2 minus 1 is nothing but 5 by 2 and again 7 by 2 minus 1 is nothing but 5 by 2 and gamma of 5 by 2 has been evaluated over here right so we're going to put this answer over here and after simplification we'll get phi into square root of pi divided by 8 so in this lecture here we have completed all the fundamentals formula of laplace transform and as well as also we have seen the concept of factorial as well as calculation of gamma function right so we're going to end this lecture here only then from the coming lecture we're going to start with the problem solving part thank you